Welcome to my channel, MathSAP by Dr. Tanya Bose. So in my last video, I told about the definition of graphs, and today I'll tell you about the types of graphs. Right? So to start with, let's talk about the directed graph. Now, as the name suggests, directed graph is a graph in which all the edges have some direction. Right? So when on the edges the directions are marked, that graph is called as a directed graph or a diagram. Let's take some examples. Now in this particular example, you can see that all the edges, the red nodes, they are all the vertices and the blue lines, they are all the edges. So you can see that on every edge there is some direction mark. Right? So that is why this graph is called a directed graph. Another example, so this is a triangular graph, so you can see the blue vertices and there are three edges joining each other and you can see that there are some directions marked on every edge. Now in these two edges you can see that it is both ways. So you can go from the, the suppose if I mark this edge as edge number one, this as edge uh, vertex number two and this is vertex number three. So this bidirectional edge means that you can go from vertex 1 to vertex 3 and similarly from vertex 3 to vertex 1, right? Okay, so let's move on to the next type of graph that is an undirected graph. So again by the name itself it suggests that any graph which has no direction. So on if the edges have no direction then it becomes an undirected graph. So the same example if I show you, so this was the same example I quoted in directed graph also. Now here you can see that the edges have no directions, no arrows are marked on these edges. So this is an undirected graph. So what does it mean that you can move from vertex to this vertex or you can move. So when you are naming this, suppose this is vertex A and this is vertex B, you can name it either AB or BA. But if some direction is marked over here, then we have to name it as BA, not A, right? Similarly, here you can see there are five vertices and no directions are marked on the edges. So this is also an example of a directed graph, right? Okay. Let's move on to the next graph. The next graph is a mixed graph. So mixed graph means when on some edges there are directions and on some edges there are no directions. Right? So it's a mix and match of both the things. So here you can see that in this very example, some of the edges they don't have any direction while some of the edges they have some direction. So this is an example of a mixed graph. Likewise, you can see this example here you can see some of the edges. There are some numbers marked on these edges. So these are the weights assigned. So towards the end of this chapter, we will let you know what is this, what are these weights used for. And otherwise, you can see that some of the edges have no direction while some of the edges have some direction. So this what this type of graph is called a mixed graph. Let's move to the next one, self-loop. So self-loop means when an edge joins the same vertex to itself, right? So let's see this. In this case, you can see that vertex 2 gets joined with vertex 2 through this loop. So it is connecting the same vertex to the same vertex. So this is an example of a self loop. Similarly, here you can see that all the vertices V1, V2, V3, all are connecting themselves. So V1 is connecting itself, V2 is connecting itself, V3 is connecting itself, right? Now one interesting fact in this, that whether you mark the direction or you do not mark the direction, it doesn't matter. There is no significance of those arrows. Why? Because suppose I have this vertex V1 and if I make a loop, this is an undirected loop and if I make this loop and I give it a direction, will it mean the same thing? This also means it is connecting V1 to V1. This is also meaning that it is connecting V1 to V1. So that means the self loop, the direction in the self loop has so, no significance because we can take it as directed or an undirected edge. Right? Okay. So now let's move on to the next one that is parallel on multiple edges. Now what are parallel on multiple edges? When two or more edges they connect the same two vertices then those edges are called multiple edges or parallel edges. 
So here you can see that we have two vertices and these two vertices are being connected with the help of two edges, right? So the first edge is also connecting vertex. Suppose if I mark this as A and this as B and let me mark this as edge 1 and this as edge 2. So you can see that edge 1 is also connecting vertex A to vertex B and edge 2 is also connecting vertex A to vertex B. Likewise, here you can see that we have multiple edges, right? So there are these two vertices A and C. The multiple edges are E1 and E2. Then you can see the vertices B and D. Again, the multiple edges are E5 and E6. Right? So when two or more edges are connecting the same two vertices, they are called as multiple edges or parallel edges. Next is a initiating and terminating vertex. Now what is initiating and terminating vertex or you can call it as a terminal vertex. Now suppose if we have a directed edge joining vertex A to vertex B and you can see the direction it is joining A to B not B to A. Right? So from wherever the edge is initiating, the edge is initiating from vertex A. So that means the vertex A will be called the initiating or the originating vertex. Then A is called the initial vertex or the initiating vertex. Similarly, wherever that edge is connecting to, so B, B becomes the terminating or the ending vertex. Right? So, if E is any edge which is connecting the vertices A and B, whether it is directed, whether it is undirected, then this edge is said to be incident to the vertices A and B. Right? So, from wherever it is originating, that is the initial vertex. So, wherever it is terminating or ending, that will become the terminal vertex. And this edge is said to be incident on both the vertices A and B. Right? Next is a simple graph. Now any graph which is not containing any loops and parallel edges, then that graph is said to be a simple graph. Now for example, this is a graph. You can see that there are no loops. None of the edges are connecting itself. None of the vertices are connecting itself. And neither there are any multiple edges or parallel edges, right? But the second example, you can see that this is a multiple edge and this is a self loop. So this is not a simple graph, right? So this is a simple graph, but the second one is not a simple graph, right? Okay. Now let's move on to the next one. That is a null graph. Now what is a null graph? A null graph, as the name suggests, it will have no edges between its vertices. So a null graph is also sometimes called as an empty graph. So you can see that this is a null graph with two vertices. So there are only two vertices here. None of the edges are joining there, right? Now this is a null graph with three vertices. This is a null graph with four vertices. So what is a null graph? Any graph which only contains vertices but not the edges, right? Okay. The next one is a trivial graph. Now trivial graph is a graph which has only one vertex. Right? So this is a trivial graph. There will be no edge obviously. There is no self loop in this. So it is only a graph which is containing just one vertex. So now a question arises that can we say that every trivial graph is a null graph? Yes. But can we say that every null graph is a trivial graph? No. Because in a null graph the vertices can be any number. Right? But for a trivial graph, the vertex should be only one in count, right? Okay. Next, finite graphs. So this also, it's very clear from the name. Any graph which contains finite set of vertices and the edges, right? So any graph which contains the vertex set and the edge set, they are finite, then it is called a finite graph. So this is an example where you can count the number of vertices and the number of edges. And hence, this becomes a finite graph. Now, here in this case, you can see that the three dots on both the ends are representing that the graph can be extended in any direction, right? So, in this case, you cannot count the number of vertices and the number of edges. So, this is an example of an infinite graph, right? 
Now let's come to the topic of source and sink. Now what are the meaning of source and sink? Now suppose I have this diagram. So you can see that there are some vertices and there are some edges connecting them and all the edges are directed. So you can see that this is a directed graph, right? Now there is one vertex in this graph from where the entire process is starting. So this vertex from where all the edges are getting Start. It's starting, right? All the edges are getting uh, initiating. So that vertex is called the source vertex. And similarly, you can see the this vertex T. Here, everything is getting ended, right? Every edge is terminating here. So this vertex will be called the sink, right? So source is nothing but where the vertices are initiating, where the edges are initiating. And sink is that vertex where the edges are terminating, right? So in the next video, I'll talk about the in degrees and the out degrees. And then I will again come back to this definition that how the source has zero in degree and the sink has zero out degree, right? So for the time being, you can just remember that source is that vertex from where the edges are initiating and sink is that vertex where all the edges are terminating. Right. Okay. After that, let's talk about the order and the size of a graph. Now, what are these two key terms, order and size? The number of vertices that is denoted by the cardinality of the set BG, that is called the order. Right. So that means the count of the number of vertices that becomes the order of that graph. And for example, if this is a graph, if I count the vertex set, it is 1, 2, 3, and 4. That means the cardinality of the vertex set BG is equal to 4. And what is the size? Size is the number of edges denoted by the cardinality of EG. That means the count of the number of edges becomes the size of the graph. So in this case, I have three edges. So you can see 1, 2, 3. So the size of the graph is Order means the count of the number of vertices and size means the count of the number of edges. Right? 